Good morning, my name is Paula Moldes, and today I'm going to talk about my article called How Art Affects the Emotional Development of Students from 6 to 8 Years. This article will try to demonstrate through academical research how art and art therapy can help primary school students in different ways, such as emotional development and academic performance. First of all, we are going to talk about the concept of art. The Cambridge Dictionary defines the concept of art as the making of objects, images, music, etc., that are beautiful or that express feelings. We should understand art as any form of expression that a human being can do. And another example we have is the definition of Oxford Languages that defines the concept of art as an activity in which the human being recreates with an aesthetic purpose, an aspect of reality or a feeling in beautiful forms using matter, image or sound. Moreover, Art has lots of implications in the human being life because we use art constantly every day. We are creating art every time we express ourselves by creating texts, dancing, jumping, painting, etc. Now, what refers to emotional development in children? At the moment, there are many definitions about the concept of emotion. However, today this term continues to be somewhat vague and imprecise mainly due to the number of meanings it entails. Emotions are the way we react to different things that happen to us every day. Such emotions can be positive, such as love, joy, or happiness, or negative, such as fear, anger, or loneliness. Moreover, as Norman Duncan explained, human development is a personal and emotional process, but also learning. Because the importance of learning, we are directly involving education in this emotional process. Furthermore, as we can see in Sanchez and Reddy's article, even our social environment can affect our way to understanding emotions, including our language, the presence of conversations about emotions, the maternal narrative style, and how parents transmit emotional content to their children. In an emotional perspective, as Pedro Gallardo also says, the way that a child perceives the world is also determined by his emotional state, making it obvious that we have to know more about emotions in order to understand ourselves in a better way. This is called self-concept and is explained by the Royal Spanish Academy as the opinion that a person has about himself that is associated with a value judgment. Moreover, as Veronica Lucia explains in her research, the first concept that a child has about himself is formed by an attachment figure of the child. We can differentiate now two different types of self-concept, the physical concept and the personal concept. The physical self-concept refers to the perception that a person has on their appearance and their physical presence in the same way of their abilities and physical competences. On the other hand, the personal self-concept is a perception of individual's own identity. After understanding their emotions, students should be able to regulate them, because depending on the circumstance, they would need to have this ability. And for this, we will show how children's auto-regulation changes depending on their ages. Before the age of six, there are some indicators of emotional control. From this age onwards, children seem to differentiate clearly between the internal emotional experience and the external expression of emotions, being able to hide their own feelings from others by modifying their external behavioral expression. In addition, at these ages, they are also aware that an alternative, the external appearance, does not imply the modification of the internal emotional state. Finally, from four to five years, it is possible to observe the use of certain strategies to modify an unwanted state. Moreover, as Pedro Gallardo also explains, when children are feeling negative emotions until they are six to seven years old, their main source of comfort and support are their parents. He also divides the children's emotional comprehension in three different groups, depending on their ages. The first group, that's from three to five years, they cannot understand and admit that one situation can lead 
to, to different emotions at the same time. The next group is from six to seven years, and they start to admit that one situation can lead to, to emotions, but understanding that one comes after the other one. And the third group that's from seven to eight years, they finally start to understand that one situation can lead to two emotions, knowing that these two emotions can be different and contrary. Working with arts helps personal and emotional development. And as Duncan says, in a therapeutic perspective, arts are really important to find what is happening in an unconscious level to create the possibility of success. Here, we should stand out that a therapeutic process is developed in groups or in individuals. We believe that artistic therapeutic work is based on the creative process and on the need and benefits of human expressions. And therefore, both terms must be present in conceptualization of art therapy. To understand better this concept, we should know what it means. Art therapy is the use of different resources and artistic elements that facilitate expression and reflection. This concept of art therapy should be understood as a trip that is giving us the opportunity to travel from the things that we already know to new terrains of personal expression. Moreover, working with emotions through art therapy improves the quality of human relationships because it, fo because it focuses on the emotional factor essential in every human being helping us at the same time to be more aware of their aspects and thus facilitating the development of a person. As Veronica Lucia exposes, this type of therapy is a really useful support to use in class in order to help the child build his own self-concept. In the same way, the creative process of art therapy improves the physical, mental and emotional well-being of a person. As an example of the use of art therapy in students with any attention deficit in primary school is the program that Mari Carmen Delgado, Maria Nieves Pérez and Francisco Cruz created and developed. In this program, the results showed a positive influence in basic aspect of learning, making it a good strategy to be used in other schools. Now I will be presenting different activity proposals. One activity that could be done in a primary school class could be on going to the playground and, using objects of nature, create a work of art such as a painting or a drawing. Another possible activity could be painting a face that expresses how they are feeling in the sand. If they have a sand on the playground, they create a drawing using only the, the sand and their fingers. Finally, to do something different, they could try to find different sounds in the class and create a melody altogether. They could use, for example, the sound of the door closing, the sound of a pencil touching a table, or the sound that a paper creates when you move it. After creating the song, they should try to identify if it sounds like a sad song, a love song, a happy song, etc. With this, the, they will be, be finding the emotion that they were feeling while creating the song. Finally, we can conclude by affirming that, after all the arguments given before, Emotional development in children affects learning, the self-concept of a child and different abilities related to emotional regulation and recognition. We have also seen that our therapy is a good strategy to help students express their feelings and emotions and that there are some projects applying this therapy in schools. Thank you for your attention and I hope you like my presentation.